The polyvagal theory, in essence, is the science of how mammals connect, but also how they respond to danger. You've heard of fight and flight. Well, there's more to it than that. The polyvagal theory is the first to explain that there are actually three distinct primary states that the body may be in. Safe and social, aka ventral vagal and parasympathetic. This allows for social connection, executive functioning, play, stillness, health, growth and restoration. It is active when the external and internal worlds are perceived as safe. Fight and flight, aka sympathetic. Survival mode allows for legs to be used for evasion and arms for aggression. Active when the internal and external worlds are perceived as being in danger. It comes with heart rate up, shallow breathing, muscle tense and looking for danger. Shutdown, aka dorsal vagal, second parasympathetic. Life threat response allows for the end of life with little to no pain. Numbing and disassociation allow for possibility of escape. Active when the internal or external worlds are perceived as life-threatening. This comes with the body being numb, disassociation, drop in blood pressure and a drop in heart rate. What about mixed states? Those three are just the primary states. It is possible to have mixed states, meaning the primaries are activated at the same time. Just like mixing primary colors creates another color, but you can't create a primary color by mixing other colors. They simply exist on their own. For example, play, safe and social plus fight and flight. For it to be play, both mammals need to have access to their safe and social state as well as their fight and flight state. If the fight and flight energy becomes too much, it's not play anymore. Stillness, a combination of safe and social plus shutdown. This is the ability to immobilize, to be still without fear, including laying down to sleep, practicing yoga or meditation, being intimate and using the restroom plus many more. Freeze, fight and flight plus shutdown. Freeze is a distinct thing, not just another word for shutdown. It's a tense, rigid immobilization compared to a collapsed one that is in shutdown. Dr. Stephen Porges quotes, we are not voluntarily controlling whether we shift in or out of these states. The autonomic nervous system. The polyvagal theory has everything to do with the autonomic nervous system. The ANS is responsible for regulating all the internal stuff you don't need to think about like breathing, digestion and heart rate. When we go into a different primary or mixed states, there are autonomic shifts that take place. For example, our breathing changes significantly if we are in our safe and social systems. Calm, deep and into the belly. Versus our fight and flight system. Faster, shallow and into our chest area. And changes significantly again when we go into shutdown state. Very shallow and small. Central to the polyvagal theory and how the ANS works is neuroception and the Deb Dana concept of the polyvagal ladder. Neuroception. The unconscious detection of cues of danger or safety in the external or internal environment. Neuroception is also responsible for shifting the autonomic states up the polyvagal ladder. The polyvagal ladder. A metaphor of how the autonomic circuitry is built in the human body. Safe and social is in the head and neck. Flight and fight is in the chest. Shutdown is in the gut. In my presentations, I like to explain that the autonomic states are a sequence of events, not a menu of options. This means that we climb up and down the polyvagal ladder in order. These are biological instincts, not conscious choices. If we neurocept that we are not safe, we drop down the ladder into sympathetic arousal. Flight first, then fight. If we cannot run away and we cannot fight, we drop down the ladder further into shutdown state. The reverse of this is true as well. To come out of shutdown, our sympathetic state needs to be kicked in first. A powerful fight state followed by flight and then into safety once again. A Deb Dana LCSW quote. 
Your autonomic state comes to life and then the information is fed up to your brain and it's your brain's job to make sense of what's happening in the body. So it makes up a story. Story follows state. When we shift up and down the polyvagal ladder, our brains create a narrative to explain why. Examples include, I deserve it, or I shouldn't have been there, or I should have said that. I'm angry because student X was staring at me. On top of that, the thoughts we have will be a reflection of our autonomic state that we are in. If we're in safe and social state, our thoughts will be more compassionate and calm. Our thoughts in flight and fight state are going to be anxious and angry, directed at the outside world. And in shutdown state, our thoughts will be more empathetic and probably directed inward. The vagal break. This is the influence of the safe and social system on the heart. With a stronger vagal break, there is a higher tolerance to distress. Traumatized individuals have compromised social engagement systems, so the minor problems become highly triggering events. Their heart rate increases, sending them into flight and fight sympathetic arousal. Think of the window of tolerance, basically. Co-regulation. Mammals are social. That includes us. Humans need safe mammals to provide co-regulation. Think of a toddler throwing a tantrum. They are dysregulated. They need a safe adult to be there in their social engagement system to provide cues of safety. That is co-regulation. Adults need it too. Mental health and behavior adaptations. The polyvagal theory makes it clear that what we consider clinical disorders or psychiatric problems may simply be a stuck defensive state or a behavioral adaptation to being stuck in a defensive state. For example, what we commonly call depression may just be someone stuck in a shutdown state. A behavioral adaptation. For example, substance use could be an individual's best attempt at self-regulating their defensive state. Stuck, not broken. I hope it's clear that the issue is not someone is broken, defective or ill, they're stuck. Stuck down their ladder in a defensive state, but fully having the potential to climb right back up. Climb the ladder. Climbing the ladder may mean a couple of things. Number one, discharging the stuck sympathetic energy if you're in freezed mixed state. Two, spending more and more time in the safe and social system, increasing the strength of your vagal brain.